337, the solid rock. Which you might do. Yeah. If We could do that. Absolutely. We could do that. Absolutely. We will. I'll see if we can get him here. I've got my I've got my overalls out and I got my they don't quite come down to my shoes there, but they're I got my white socks ready to go. So when I sit down they'll be pulled up to my knees. Yeah, I got those rings, those navy rings around the top, so I'm going to be set for Sunday, so y'all y'all, watch out. Yeah, I think it would just be in suspense. I mean, suspense. It's suspense? <laughs> Suspenders? That's what Tammy said. She said, you know, I don't know, just don't know what to think about Brother Ash, what he might come in on Sunday. What's he going to be dressed like? <laughs> he said, she said overalls, you know. Anybody I, can black their teeth out? Black their teeth out? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, maybe that, maybe I won't get them punched out before that time. So anyway, it'll be a fun day, you know. Don't give me any more ideas. 
Yeah, I know. Yeah. So anyway, but uh, it'll, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. So, all right, let's sing a little bit of the solid rock here. Three thirty-seven. depending on what time I get done, you may have to sing some extra songs. And I said, I texted him back. I said, man, I've been wanting to preach a fireball sermon to this Wednesday night crowd for so long. And uh, so the closest thing, I'm not going to preach, but I ain't going to sing a fire song that I have about that. Set my soul afire, 302, 302. And then we'll turn over to Brother Ashley after that. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> Set my soul of fire, 302. It's a good song, good message in this song for sure. <laughs> Falter, 
kids over there in the Arabs. There's a whole lot more over there than there are over here. <laughs> and that's good. That's good. Let's go down and prayer before we start. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beautiful day that you've given us. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for the help that we have in spite of Difficulties from time to time, we are so blessed. Thank you for the country that we live in. We know that we face many problems and difficulties, but we pray, Father, that you would just help us to come back to you so that you could put your hand of blessing upon us. Forgive us our many sins as a nation, as a society, for not being the light that we need to be to the rest of the world. And Father, for us as your church, across this land to help us to also be the light to the rest of the country that we ought to be. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. And thank you for your forgiveness and the place that you've prepared for us in heaven. Help us, Father, to have nothing else, as that song said, important but to live for you. And to serve you, we pray in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. The former treatise that I made of Theophilus, and all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Well, we don't know for sure who Theophilus was, but the uh, meaning of the name 
best friend they've got. And uh, he may have been writing to Theophilus, but he's writing to all of us today as well. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles, whom he had chosen. So Luke, who is the writer, has already shared the Gospel of Luke in written form, and, and uh, he's acknowledging that. But he says, to whom he also showed himself alive after his passion, I mean infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Forty days is another one of those significant numbers in the Bible. But uh, he says, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Why would they mean why would there be a need to tell them not to leave Jerusalem? Jesus did tell them that. Why do you think he told them that? And that was part of his plan to receive the Holy Spirit. I guess he was afraid that after he had gone back to heaven that they might just sort of separate and go their own way and go you know, for somewhere else it. than in Jerusalem, out of fear perhaps. But uh, he says, wait for the promise which saith he, you've heard of me. And, and he told them that there by the, the seashore there when he was meeting with the disciples uh, to, to wait. And he says, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. How did John baptize? By immersion. By immersion, we believe. Uh, were the apostles going to be immersed in the Holy Spirit? In a manner of speaking. In a manner of speaking. It was everywhere. Now it's true, it did, there were cloven tongues of fire that came down and rested on him, but he was in the whole room. And uh, uh, I can see that as a mercy. <laughs> uh, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times which the Father hath put in his own power. There are people who think they've got it figured out. Has anybody got it figured out when he's going to come again? No. Nobody. Um, what's the important lesson, though? Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. If you don't know when the thief's coming, you better be watching. He'll <laughs> uh, come as the time when you think not. Um, it's when you've left your cell phone at home that you think you really need it. <laughs> and so always be prepared, whether uh, it's talking about cell phone or your insurance, if you let it lapse, that's when something happens. <laughs> and so always be prepared. Always be ready for the coming again of Jesus. If he came again in the next three seconds, are we ready? Hope so. <laughs> uh, we better be. If not, uh, well, let me ask you this, why wouldn't we be? We've had every opportunity to be. Uh, sometimes we think, well, if I'd have known, I would have done this. <laughs> uh, we don't want to be embarrassed by what we've not done, that we should have done, or done that we shouldn't do. But the Apostle Paul himself acknowledged that. He said, there are things that I uh, uh, know I should do that I've not done, and things I've done that I know I shouldn't do. And he considered himself the worst of sinners. And most of us do consider ourselves that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and that's good, but we should be constantly striving for better. And uh, uh, trusting in his grace and in his mercy. He says, uh, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and 
he shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Where does that cover? Everywhere. Everywhere. Can we go everywhere? No, but what can we do where we do go? We can be witnesses. And uh, that requires constant concentration on what's important. And uh, I like the uh, story that Melody shared back after that storm we had a few weeks back. She said the next day she was eating lunch, I think it was, and uh, she had her RECC t-shirt on and some guy was really getting mad for being there eating lunch when everybody was out of electric. And she said she had to remind herself that she was a Christian before she answered him. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but we have to stay focused on who we are and who we represent and who we live for. And that's very important. Because it just takes a slip of the tongue to do more damage than we can uh, make up for with lots and lots of effort. And yeah, you never make up for it. People are watching you, don't you think they're watching you? Basically? They're watching, yes. Um, let's see. Number nine. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the other most part of the earth. Now, we can't go everywhere, but we do have more ability than any civilization in the past to get that message out there with the internet, with television, with telephones, with everything that we've got, we have more ability. And to whom much is given, what? Much is required. And uh, so we need to make sure that we, we do. It says, when he, had be, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Um, I'm going to back up just to verse 9. Why would he be received in a cloud? What do you think? Yeah, it's speculation, obviously. Coming back the same way. What if there had been no cloud, he just kept getting farther and farther away? Why is this better? Because he, he doesn't look smaller and smaller. <laughs> He's, you remember him as you saw him, and uh, the cloud takes him. And, and the cloud was a symbol that's often used by God in the Old Testament. The, the fire and the cloud. Pardon? Isn't the cloud considered one of the heavens? Yeah, yeah, part of, uh, of that. Now we may think we know more than that nowadays, but we don't. <laughs> uh, and it, uh, I think it was interesting, most of you were uh, around back when the first Sputnik went up into space. Remember what the Russians said? They didn't say God out there anywhere. What did our astronauts say? Some of everywhere. Some of everywhere. Uh, and uh, I think that speaks well for America, but uh, we have failed as a nation to represent Christ like we should have. But uh, hopefully he won't completely give up on us. We'll have another chance. <laughs> but I think it's obvious to see he's removing his hand of blessing to a, a greater and greater degree. And uh, we need to get back. Only, only a repentance and a coming back to God will get America blessed like we were. And they said, why stand you here uh, gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Why were they standing gazing? We all would be in amazement. Amazement. Uh, what was wrong with that? Pardon? I would think that they probably wanted one better than this. Yeah. 
had they wanted him there. But uh, what should they have been doing? They, they were sitting there doing nothing. They're sitting there doing nothing, <laughs> but gazing, looking, and we have a tendency to look at what we lost instead of what we have. And uh, we need to focus on what we've got. Uh, it shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Now, uh, Steve's class has been studying a lot about this. <laughs> and their, their studies and things go. Um, there's all kinds of scenarios that you can see uh, of things that said about when Jesus returned. Um, none of them are wrong. <laughs> it's just that our brain isn't always able to put them together and make them fit. <laughs> and, uh, uh, in one place, Jesus says, lightning it. Uh, lights in one place on your head. And seen in another place, so shall this come to you. There's one about the two women uh, working in the field or whatever, and one be taken and another left. And there's a whole lot about his second coming that we don't understand. But we don't have to worry about that. When he comes, he'll take care of that. What we're supposed to be worrying about is what we're doing until that happens. And if we're ready for it, it'll be a glorious day. Um, there was an old song that says, uh, uh, Just a little longer, please, Jesus. There are so many women you haven't seen uh, asking you to wait. There's another song that says, Even so, Lord Jesus, come. <laughs> Sometimes we want him to go and, and take us out of our struggles and our troubles here on earth. But uh, fortunately, uh, he'll do it at the right time. And the Father says, go bring my children home. It says, they returned into Jerusalem and to, from the Mount of Olives, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. How much was a Sabbath day's journey? Less than a whole day's journey. Pardon? Less than a whole, whole day. Less than a whole day. It was uh, about 2,000 uh, meters, I think it was. Um, anyway, the commentary I read said about three-fourths of a mile um, that they were allowed to travel on the Sabbath day. And uh, all kinds of rules. What if you needed to go just a little bit farther to rescue somebody? Uh, of course, they had the ox in the ditch, but it was in the ditch more for the, the leaders and the Pharisees than it was for the common man, wasn't it? Uh, they made it hard. In fact, Jesus accused them of uh, keep a, keeping people from getting into the kingdom. Uh, that's what he accused them of. It says, when they were coming, coming in, they went into an upper room where abode Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, Zelotus, and Judas, the brother of James. <coughs> These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. <coughs> and his brethren finally came over to his side Apparently, at one time they were jealous, but we know that one particular brethren became a significant figure. Which one was that? James. James. Uh, after they, after Herod killed the, the apostle James, uh, James, the brother of Jesus, became a very significant leader in the early church. Says, and in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120, Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, 
which was God to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Peter here is quoting the Old Testament, referring to the Old Testament. Was he a, a, a expert in the Bible? Not prior to this, the, uh, we we'll hear a little bit later on, we'll see how the leaders were amazed at their knowledge, uh, being unlearned or uneducated people, and uh, they took notice that they had been with Jesus. If they have been with Jesus, our knowledge of the scriptures is going to increase. Um, and Several of you probably remember Brother Jacobs, the used pastor at Pleasant Hill. Um, I remember him back not long after the computers came out. He said, if you want to get something out of the computer, you have to have first put it in. <laughs> and uh, that might not have been his words, but that was his point. And um, if, if we put it in, the Holy Spirit can bring it out when he wants it. Um, uh, most of you sympathize with the, the problem of trying to think of something and it takes two days for it to, to come. But uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't have that problem. He'll pop it up there uh, when it's needed. If we put it in, then we're in tune with the Holy Spirit. Uh, he'll bring that to our attention. He said, uh, verse 17, for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. Anything about this verse that uh, you have a question about? Yes, and I think it was Matthew told that, I'm not positive, but uh, that he went out and hanged himself because they wouldn't take the money back and change their mind. Um, what do we need to assume whenever we see what seems like a conflict? That it's not. It's not a conflict. Both are true. He could have hanged himself at the same time he fell. Uh, all things are possible with God, and God does not make a mistake. So both statements are true. And uh, the non-believer will say, well, I just don't know what to think about that. But the believer knows that they're both true. <laughs> um, Verse 19, and it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, and so much that as that field is called in their proper tongue, a kelma, that is to say, the field of blood. And it, why was it called the field of blood? Blood money, not, not Judas' blood, but Jesus' blood. <laughs> that uh, blood money. But for it is written in the book of Psalms, <clears throat> let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take, or his office another take. Wherefore, these men, which have company with us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went in and was amongst us, beginning from the baptism of John, under that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. What does this verse do to a, an assumption that is common that we make? It's easy to 
on the surface make the assumption that these 12 disciples were the ones that went with Jesus everywhere. There was a whole lot more that followed them everywhere. Uh, they may not have been there every moment with them in the closest circle, but there was a lot of people that were followers of Jesus, at least 120 here <laughs> that were gathered together. <coughs> And they appointed two, Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Lord, thou which knowest the hearts of all men, show us whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. I would assume that the pastor search committee that's been working hard and struggling would wish that they could just cast lots and figure out who, <laughs> who the church should have for the next pastor. <laughs> um, it's not that easy. But how did they do those lots? And how did that prove that that was God's man? trusting God for that <laughs> and they trusted God for that I mean it's it's foreign to us but uh, that's the way God did it often times but where does the priest fit out but was involved in doing that yeah and there's another big well known Bible character that a lot fell on who was that John <laughs> uh they figured out he was the one that was the, the guilty culprit while they were having such a storm. Um, it's interesting, but that's the way they did it. <coughs> but Donnie, I don't recommend doing it that way. <laughs> 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 uh, they, they've been praying hard on that and working hard and uh, appreciate the work. <coughs> Chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. That's important. They were with one accord in one place. I already mentioned earlier that they you know, were in accord. And that's the key. When God's people are together, uh, amazing things can happen. And it did here. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Uh, was it the wind or the sound? Pardon? The sound? Uh, I would suggest both. <laughs> the sound obviously would, and you'd think the wind would, although sometimes the wind's a little stronger in one part of a room than it is somewhere else. But, uh, and I guess the sound could be that way too. If you're right up next to the speaker at one of these uh, concerts, <laughs> it could be pretty strong. People choose the back seat on purpose on those times. But, uh, the Holy Spirit was going to fill that room. Um, and there appeared unto them cloven 
time this like is a fire when it's that hot in Japan. You've probably seen pictures trying to represent that. What does the picture, picture draw of the floating tunnels? It's splitting like a fork of a river, coming under one head and going over to another head. It's kind of the way the picture draws. That's kind of the way I would picture it. Um, but uh, it was more than just that piece of fire on the head. The Holy Spirit filled that room. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Have you ever heard people speak in tongues? I never have. Becky has. <laughs> uh, one of the churches she went to when she was going to come to uh, What do you think about it? Speaking in tongues is just the way God may be dealing with you. Um, but it doesn't make you a, a better Christian than one that doesn't speak in tongues. It doesn't make you feel more of the Holy Ghost. It doesn't make you more filled with the Holy Ghost, true. Uh, but uh, we should not put it down. He said, forbid not to speak in tongues, but to encourage them to be orderly <laughs> in what they're doing. Okay. Um, now God could have done this two different ways here. It could have been a, a miracle of hearing as well as a miracle of speaking. Uh, but I think chances are they were speaking in that other time. Uh, some, I've heard someone say they just heard it in that time. That would, that would have been a miracle too. Well, you know when you took, who left the room to go tell people, or who was standing outside hearing it, and stepped in and then took off and told. But uh, in the 70s, when the uh, Asbury Revival broke out, uh, the word spread. And uh, that, I forget how many days that, that chapel service continued without stop. <laughs> and it was amazing. And uh, out of that, and the lay witness statements that formed, there was one there in Lincoln County, and uh, Becky was on it, a uh, youth group lay witness statement. That's how I met her and how we got together <laughs> out of that revival. But um, God works in amazing ways. And they said, uh, 
We hold our God always would speak Galileans. And now here we every man in their own time, wherein we were born. Now, um, I have a feeling that it wouldn't be like if someone from the hills of eastern Kentucky was speaking French with, with that uh, access, or someone from Mississippi speaking German with that access. I have a feeling it wouldn't be like that. I have a feeling they were hearing it sound just like they would have said in speaking to them. They would have spoken it, but uh, uh, I don't think they would have had the problem that uh, that Peter was, had pointed out to him when he was saying, I know not the man now, that your speech betrays you. I don't think they would have picked up on the accent of the, of the uh, they would have known the words clearly. Now, they, they might have known that they were yellow rose, but I don't think it was an accent thing. I think they were speaking clearly. The languages they would have spoken. He says, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers among them, Jews and proselytes, Greeks and Arabians. That's a whole lot of territory. Why would there have been that many people around at that time? Right. Uh, seven weeks, I think it was, from the, the uh, Passover, the Feast of the Harvest, which would put it right at 40 days. And so they were in town for that. And they were amazed and were without saying one to another, what meaneth this? And the others said, oh, they're just full of new wine. Um, why would they have thought that? <laughs> if they heard them speaking a language that they didn't understand, they might have thought that. But if they had been interested in believing, they would have heard one in their language. And um, I think that would have been the key. And the non-believer makes all kinds of excuses not to believe. And, uh, but the believer believes to his blessing and his salvation. Um, but Peter standing up before them, well, let's see. That's probably a good enough place to stop here. We're getting close to 8 o'clock. There's a whole lot more territory in Peter's speech here. Uh, any thoughts that you have on what we've talked about tonight? Why would we play the church for 40 days uh, celebration? Sure. <laughs> Wouldn't it? <laughs> we could well stay in one accord for 40 days, right? <laughs> But that's important, and, and you can't emphasize that enough. Stay together. And that being in one accord doesn't mean everybody agrees with me. It means we work together to stay together. Anything else? And if not, let's be dismissed. I'll ask Brother Tini will come lead us in a prayer.